really clear about the policy that this president has pursued, which is a steadfast commitment to our NATO alliance. The cornerstone of that alliance is a pledge that all of the allies have made to mutual self-defense. The U.S. commitment to that pledge is ironclad. There should be no mistake or miscalculation made about this country's commitment to our transatlantic alliance. Donald Trump will take center stage very soon in Cleveland, the place where he feels the most comfortable, center stage, where his attacks come without filter and have made him the Republican nominee. And it's fair to say there is a good portion of America on both the right and the left waiting to see where he takes the television audience and where he takes America. Slipping under the radar in the last 24 hours and catching the attention of the White House. And as a matter of fact, not just the White House, but 27 other nations across the globe were Trump's comments about America's future in NATO, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. They have rattled more than just sabers and brought a quick backlash about the rule and the role of America around the world. And at a role, as a matter of fact, that is unwavering and no president should ever question. The exact note that has been brought into question here, and this is something that people are going to be talking about for days, it got buried just a little bit, but quite frankly, they're going to be talking about it. Article 5 in NATO's defense strategy basically states that any nation that is under attack in the Baltics in the event of a Russian attack must be protected and every NATO country must come to their aid. Let's talk about that and more. Our guest is former co-chair of the Jeb Bush for Governor campaign, party chairman of the Republican Party in Broward County, Florida, and a veteran political analyst. Welcome Ed Poswoli to the hard line. Ed, it's good to see you again. Let me get your take on this, because Donald Trump made this statement to the New York Times, and quite frankly, it's been buried after everything that Ted Cruz said. But he's pointing out, you can't forget the bills. He's basically saying, if you don't pay us what you owe us, and he wasn't clear as to how far back that would go, then we don't have an obligation <laughs> to fulfill our obligation to you. Isn't that dangerous? Well, it's dangerous, but I don't think that's exactly what he said. But look, let's understand what Donald Trump's mission is, the reason for his candidacy. It's to question exactly that. It's a 40 or 50 year treaty. It's time to question those things to make sure that certain countries aren't taking advantage of us. It's time that America stops being the policeman around the world without some treaty. Uh, you know, remember, treaties are two way streets. Some of those other countries have to fulfill their obligations as well. I don't believe what he meant, though, is that if the Russians march over, that the United States wouldn't come to their aid. We just want to make sure it's a two-way street on, on those obligations. All right. He did absolutely say you can't forget the bills. They have an obligation to make payments. Right. You can't say forget that. We just want to point that out. Other big news that comes out today. Roger Ailes is stepping down at Fox News. It is now official. The man who basically changed the Republican Party forever, changed politics forever, changed broadcasting is out. How do you personally think this will change, if at all, the Republican Party? Well, I don't know if it'll change the Republican Party, but clearly you can't, uh, you know, you've got to look at somebody like Roger Ailes, who is a trendsetter, who really created the space. So it provides some opportunities for others, like Newsmax, as an example. But the key is going to be the personalities, the on-air personalities. It, it's been told to me that there are several contracts that allow for some of those personalities to get out of those contracts if Roger Ailes is in heading up Fox. That would be more dangerous for Fox, and we'll have to see how that works out over over time. I got about 60 seconds left here. I can't let you get away because you're there on the convention floor. I spoke to John Gizzi a couple of moments ago. 60 seconds to you. What do you No, Let's change. Not what you expect Donald Trump to say. What do you want him to say tonight? I want Donald Trump to come across as somebody who's who's caring and compassionate and understands about what his presidency might look like and why that's going to help the Americans who are watching this. He's got to come across as presidential and have people understand both domestically and internationally what a Trump presidency would look like. He has been told before that he needs to come across as presidential, and most times he has gone off script. Would you say, and certainly you're somebody who knows politics very well, he needs to stay on the script tonight and follow the teleprompter? 
Well, you know, you, you, it's dangerous. He's got to t stay on the teleprompter to a certain extent, but you've got to give him a little bit of room to kind of do a little bit of a rant because that's partly what, what his appeal is to voters. And I think some of that honesty needs to come out. The key is going to be whether they can balance both keeping him disciplined and structured and still allowing him some room to go do what he does best. Guaranteed. Donald Trump will take all the room he needs because that's what Donald Trump does. Ed Pozzuoli, <laughs> thanks so much for joining Absolutely. us, my friend. We appreciate your time. From the air kiss to what as a former candidate may have done, filling the night air with all and more on the political animal. Plus your invaluable phone comments. And don't forget, our special convention coverage begins at 7 tonight right here on Newsmax.